The topic of this video is multiple classes of sites. It is possible that there are more than one type of receptor in the system. Say we have R1 and R2. These two classes of receptors are not interconvertible. So R1 and the recept and the ligand A can form AR1. R2 and the AR2. So A is one of the ligands in the system. If there is a competition from another ligand P, we have PR1, PR2. So in the system, there are two types of ligands and two types of receptors. For this reaction, it is a the antagonist and antagonist competition model we talked about. So we can have PR1 equals R1 T P over P plus KP1 1 plus A over KA1. So KP1 is the is the dissociation constant of this reaction and uh, Ka1 is the dissociation constant for ligand A in this reaction. Similarly, we can also write down the equation for PR2. The total binding, which is, is the observed binding, as the specific binding of PR1 plus the specific binding of PR2 and plus the non-specific binding which is the constant times the concentration of the probe of the ligand. Because there are two types of receptors, the fraction of receptor 1 is the concentration of R1T over the concentration of the total receptor which is R1T plus R2T. For the fraction of receptor 2, you have the similar thing, R2T over R1T plus R2T. And we know the total concentration, RT, equals the concentration of R1 plus the concentration of R2. So, for the equation of PR1, we can write it as the fraction of receptor 1 times RT, which is this part, times P over P plus EC50. EC50 is this part. It depends on both P1, it depends on both KP1 and KA1, and on the concentration of the, uh, the competitor in the system. Therefore, we can have an equation like this, in which F1 is the fraction of the receptor type 1, and F2 is the, is the fraction of the receptor type 2. So 60% of the total concentration of receptor is receptor type 1, Therefore, 60% of the specific binding is caused by the existence of R1. And the rest of the binding, 40% is caused by R2. You can see that curve A is made up of two rectangular hyperbolas. So from here to here is the first rectangular hyperbola, which corresponds to the binding of R1. From here to here, the upper 40% of the curve A corresponds to the binding of R2 and the ligand. You can only observe two complete rectangular hyperbolas when the difference between Kp1 and Kp2 is bigger or equal to 4.
Why is that? If you plot a rectangular hyperbola on a semi-log scale, it should span over four log units. So, in order to observe two instinct rectangular hyperbola, the two EC50s of them should be at least four log units apart. Only curve A satisfies this condition. Log KP1 is negative 8 and log KP2 is negative 4. So from curve A to curve I, the difference between KP1 and KP2 decreases. And you can see the two rectangular hyperbolas start to overlap on their projections on the x-axis. For curve I, so curve I is a perfect rectangular hyperbola because the value of kp1 and kp2 are the same. So basically, these two equations are the same. If the system has two distinct types of receptors, kp1 should be different from kp2. In these three panels, kp1 is less than kp2, which means the probe has a higher affinity to the receptor type 1. In the top panel, when the specific binding on receptor 1 is almost 90%, the binding on the receptor type 2 is only about 10%. So what does this tell you? In some case, you need a drug that only blocks or only binds to one type of receptor without touching the other. This will be a decent situation to work with. The difference between KP1 and KP2 is large enough. If the difference between KP1 and KP2 is small, for example, in the bottom panel, there is too much overlapping between the two curves. So when the probe binds to one receptor, it also binds to a significant amount of the other type of receptor. So there is no selectivity for the receptor. In top panel, there is a good selectivity for the receptor. On this page, in the top panel, the radio labeled ligand is the independent variable. At the bottom panel, the unlabeled ligand is the independent variable. The more unlabeled ligand there is, the lower signal you will detect. In both cases, the probe or the ligand has a higher affinity to receptor type 1. So for the top panel, because the radio label ligand is the probe, is the independent variable, you should look at the KP1 and the KP2. At the bottom, the unlabeled ligand, which is A, is the independent variable, so you should look at the KA1 and KA2 instead of KP1 and KP2. In either case, the probe has a higher affinity to receptor type 1. Therefore, the probe, in either case, will bind to the receptor type 1 first. After it finishes, it will start to bind to receptor type 2. So that's all for the topic on multiple classes of size. Good luck, and uh, I'm sure you will have fun.